Good morning everyone and welcome back to part three of our Chinatown mock build series here uh, where today the biggest news is that I have finally imported and built the palace cinema and we'll be working on one of the sides of that a bit later on. However if you're new here and don't know what I'm talking about this is our series where we are building in studio a custom Chinatown to combine the Chinese New Year sets, palace cinema and Ninjago city sets all together and there are a couple of little twists which you'll see on the way and one of those being that the buildings are double-sided but um, one side being a normal street and one side being the the uh, Chinatown however what we're working on right now is filling in the path something that I didn't do last week when I worked on our internet cafe facade uh, but it's important that we just get this lined out ready for when the actual Chinese New Year market stalls come in but here you can see we have moved over to the uh, palace cinema and one thing you may notice is that it's shifted and that is um, something I did deliberately so I took away uh, I shifted the entire building over by six studs and took away one of the pavements uh, on the inner side, which I'll show you at the end of the time lapses today. But here I am trying to make a sort of New York slash city style facade uh, for the Palace Cinema to go on the normal street hand side. Uh, because, as I mentioned earlier, we have our Chinese New Year alleyway kind of facing inwards. And that's the side that the uh, Palace Cinema is facing. But on the outside, it needs to look like just any ordinary city street. So how I'm going to do that is by making a kind of a apartment building sort of skyscrapery kind of... Uh, vibe but it's going to be a lot smaller and try and fit the palace cinema side which is actually surprisingly difficult it's actually not easy to add a third side to a modular we've intended to uh, especially given the lack of space and depth i have to work with and that i can't actually build on the wall on the ground floor uh, that's just because there's a staircase there and it would look really weird to have a third set of windows on the inside of the palace cinema and every angle is an important angle in my eyes so here you can see I'm adding some window frames and you may be also wondering what those uh, little transparent things are and those are supposed to represent kind of like show lights shining up on these posters. Now I did think about using the DC stand piece but Studio is yet to import that one, that's one of my most wanted pieces to ha have in Studio, uh, but hopefully that will be added soon. Um, anyway, just blending the pavement now and we'll start building up the wall which is still going to be in this dark tan and you'll notice here that it's actually going to be a double thick wall. Also just changing out the uh, the lights there to um, triangle slopes to make them shine a bit better, uh, like in the right direction. Uh, but we're going to use a lot of masonry for this wall. And as I said, double thick because I can't make it single thick. And those windows, which are white, would actually be movie posters, which sort of help this um, kind of false facade of it not being actual windows, but it looking like windows. It It's hard to explain, but uh, the purpose of those windows is definitely to act as mock windows that seem like windows but aren't windows. Um, I'm saying windows way too much so I'm going to move on. Uh, you also see I'm experimenting with some 45 degree angle hinges there and this is for a kind of 3D sign that's nothing in particular but sort of something that I'll come back and I'll do a print for later using one of the existing prints and this is just in red. It's just to add a bit more detail to this whole area and you can see that I'm trying to make it look like an arrow at the point so it's pointing somewhere. I was trying to, to find the um, the little pokey bit that we have in um, the top of the Disney Castle sprites and other stuff, which you can see I added to the side there. I have to think of some Chinese characters or something to add to that. I think it's pointing towards the cinema or the palace um, or the internet cafe. You also see I've added two black 2 by 3s and these would be showing timetables, so uh, showing of the brick separator at 2 p.m. etc. So just some some boards for people to get a bit better idea of what's going on um, in the cinema if they're just walking down the street. And you can see this sort of effect is starting to come together. Obviously it will look a lot better when those white windows are coloured with uh, movie posters, but I just can't do that today. I'm going to put that in for an up, uh, a later episode. I'm just playing with some crenellations now, so I thought I wanted to use dark bluish grey grills, but I'm pretty sure that will change in a second. I've used a lot of those half circles, something I seem to be fairly fond of in this build. Um, in the end, I got rid of the edge crenellations. Oh, no, wait, they're coming back. Mixel teeth? Nope, I don't think that's the final version either. I don't know what was going through my head when I thought the brown would be the right colour, though, for those. Um, it's very clearly not. Uh, and we'll change those out in a minute for something more suitable. So just re-additioning the sign at a lower angle, decided I didn't like the mixel teeth, and we went for uh, curved slopes with cutouts in the end, which is a nice touch, if a bit simplistic. Anyway, 
Now we're back to the interior of our fancy Chinese restaurant, which is not a bank, and I am modifying the staircase to come out a bit further now that we've finally sorted out where the uh, borders of the bank's going to go. And in between episodes, I did indeed shrink the bank by two studs um, in size because it's an ATM room, so um, it didn't need it. Uh, but right now I'm just struggling with my angles to get the stairs right, and those stairs will be in brown in a minute, but I just generally work in white until I'm happy. Uh, there we go, I'm extending the wall by those extra two studs there, uh, and now the ATM really doesn't look any different being substantially smaller. Adding some supports, less for actual structural support and more for it just looking good, and then I'm working on how I'm going to expand the ingots. And yet again, this is another double thick wall, <laughs> which is another interesting thing to point out because I was not going to have this sideways wallpaper pattern in the middle of the Chinese restaurant. But either way, uh, we're building up the wall on the other side, which looks like a double thick wall, but really it's just this modulars wall and then the palace and the wall is um, behind it. But the whole plan is to cover up the wallpaper. Here's something I didn't think I was actually going to be doing is I'm um, adding the black ingots along the back wall of this building. But in the end, that worked out pretty well. Uh, unfortunately, there's no kind of like corner way to work these ingots in particular. So um, I just had to color some pieces black and hide them. Uh, and then there's no ingots in those corners because, well, you can't because um, corner clashing. Uh, but either way, here we go. We're bringing the ingots along and we're moving on towards the back wall now. Got to add some of that tiling, which I'm pretty sure I had to redo entirely later on. Uh, but the floor here is going to be tan, just like these steps outside. And you can see tiling like this goes fairly quickly and um, it's a really easy thing to get done. But each one of these time lapses is between an hour and two hour of work. So um, these small jobs do add up. Right here, we're kind of building the fish tank, uh, which is uh, the centerpiece for this ground floor here. And yet again, I decided to use the ingots, which was something completely unexpected on my part. Uh, but we're just kind of building up the base beneath uh, the tank. And there we go. There's the sand for the bottom of the fish tank. And we'll come back to that later. I'm just sort of filling out the gaps, uh, making the black trim complete. And here I wanted to get the reception desk in, which is obviously very cramped for the poor receptionist but they'll be standing on those two jumper plates behind this thin desk and I believe I went for the same theming again for the desk surprisingly even though I said I didn't want to really do it around the inside but it just worked so well and added a nice contrast. Anyway stairs are going up to full height once I finally move them into their third and final position <laughs> um, but they are just the right height to come up exactly where I want on the third floor however we haven't really finished the walls on this build yet either so uh, those are still to come. Uh, either way moving on I'm saying either way too much we are now moving on to a trim around the top of the bank and this is purely uh, to kind of make it look nice because what I'm going to have to do above the bank is kind of um, to fit the stars it's easy to explain later on when I actually do it but this trim is to sort of cap off that wallpaper sort of like a curtain rail that you have in a house uh, and then above that that allows me to do something completely different color scheme wise because that's just the unpapered unwallpapered upstairs part or possibly even that the um, anyway our I'm going to explain that later when I actually do it. It will make a lot more sense when you can see it. But we're back here kind of making the back facade for the fish tank. And you can see I'm using the slopes and inverted slopes technique to create like a little sand dune with uh, some blue water behind it. Some very blue water. I chose medium azure or medium blue. Um, and now we've got to add some fish, really. But first, let's get the walls in. And I'm going to have to find a suitable windscreen, really, for the, the side of this fish tank, which is actually harder than you might think. But I got really really lucky and was able to use one I believe from the big um, sports cars this I believe was used in the Beetle possibly or the Mustang one of the two probably more likely the Mustang but it was a nice big window that actually keeps uh, from plastic lines breaking up the the uh, the the fish tank sorry for that um, anyway we've got the fish in here uh, try I'm adding on to some coral uh, trying to make these fish uh, float uh, that one's dead upside down apparently and uh, now we'll be adding a uh, crab as well just to kind of finish off this aquarium you can see the modified brick and I chose dark red for the crab and you can see that beautiful big windscreen is in there right now 
and then I'm using uh, panel pieces stacked on the sides uh, to finish off the look, but those sides will rarely be seen because, well, they're at the back. Anyway, there it goes, the black top using two minifigure stands, and now it's time to do the desk, which I cheaped out on, like I said, and uh, just use more black ingots for with a modified plate on the top, and that finished that part off. Next, we're going over and making the last of the interior features, which took a lot of trial and error. Originally, I wanted to use more big windscreens, but they were too tall. So I went down to panels, and those were too tall when you see the Easter egg I'm trying to include. So when I think of fan fancy Chinese restaurants, I like to think back to movies where I've seen fancy Chinese restaurants. And one of the funnier little references I thought I could put in is when uh, uh, Venom gets in the... Uh, crab tank at the restaurant in his own solo movie Venom so we're going to have a blank minifigure in here which I can put Venom into later which I thought was um, a bit of a random touch but you know um, you got to embrace these quirky little things when they show up so this is just him relaxing in the cold water because of uh, the symbiote's effects but either way here he is in here he's got a little uh, starfish in there to kind of add to the effect maybe I'd dump a crab in there in real life but I'm not fiddling with studios fine positioning tools but you can't really see him because he's black on black but that's because he has no printing and that's again something I'll work on in a future episode I think I'll do a dedicated one in a couple of time to do all these scenes around this building in particular so here we are filling up the last of the double walls to get rid of it and bring it all to one flat level. Uh, and actually the walls of the fancy restaurant will continue up to full height, but this is what I meant about the bank. So that we can access the ATM, the front like sort of section is gonna be removable at the height of those brackets, which I'm putting on. Meaning uh, that you'll be able to get better access to the ATMs. And also sort of because the style I'm going for for this upper part is uh, like next door. This pseudo like apartment that has its ground floor has been like modified to be this ATM. So from the outside, it will look like there are apartments at uh, the level here. However, on the inside, it's basically just hollow for lamps. <laughs> so it's sort of like um, a reclaimed interior of an old apartment building that's being used for a ATM room. Really, that's just an excuse for me to do double high walls. But anyway, let's go to the front of the uh, restaurant now where I am working in colours because the amount of white on my screen may not look too bad for you, but it was really blinding for me. Uh, so to work on this balcony, which was going to be a fine positioning job, sorry, not a balcony, um, the last of the awnings, which I've been saying I'm going to make since week one that I'm finally going to do, I decided to work in colours so I could actually see the contrast of um, what I was doing, really. Uh, so currently I'm just getting the angle right, turning them into uh, black three by threes you can see I didn't like what I was doing there decided to go back to uh, squares so I'm just using hinge plates nice and simple uh, and I am building up sort of the awning shape that I want and there we go now I'm adding the uh, ingot tiles uh, like I said I would and the corners are in black as well and I can't remember what I do next uh, yeah I shift them over I'd rather have a symmetrical point in the middle and then we add the <laughs> the um, half round circle tiles like in the Chinese New Year Temple Fair. And then just some uh, flowers. Oh no, I changed my mind then. Uh, nope, I did not add any decor to the front. And now you can see we're turning it all back to white because I no longer need to see properly. Uh, but we're back to building up walls as well. You know, I haven't touched this green building in a while. I really need to get back to that one as well. But there's still a lot of work to do on the Palace Cinema, which we'll get to in just a minute. But this was a nice quick job here, just building up the brick walls for the half. And now my attention is going to start to turn towards building up this uh, facade that I mentioned a couple of minutes ago for the ATM room and kind of bring it up to the same height, which is going to be a bit of a trial and error basis. But my main goal for it is to make it look like what I said earlier, but also to tie it into the Palace Cinema facade that we've been making on it right so we're just adding the tiling in because this is actually for modular second floor, um, which we we'll get to eventually. Maybe not soon. I really don't know. Uh, I just wanted to play around here with some more awnings, but um, I changed my mind because I can. It's my build. <laughs> here we go. We're starting to build the um, framing for uh, this detachable segment. And you can see I immediately went back to using uh, one way at rails because they're just useful. Uh, so here we are with tan colour, which seems like a shocking departure, but honestly, I think it works pretty well, and I really like the final result. But anyway, we've got our two layers for security, and now we're into the adding windows phase, and I knew I wanted to do something with some 
sort of out poking windows, which we have here in dark tan under some jumpers, allowing them to stick out by half a stud. We're there just setting up the windows as then well as some balconies. And you'll notice I'm not just filling them in with tiles, but that's because I'm going to leave some studs, as you can see there, for some flowers. You've got to add some colour, some variation, break up your repetitive building facades. But here go in the windows and I haven't decided what colour yet. Um, and you can see that I also chose the risk of adding in some extra colours. So firstly, we have tan. Secondly, we have dark tan. Those are the two main colours along with uh, the windows in white. But I also chose to go for some dark orange to kind of represent some bit of terracotta -y, uh clay on the windows. Maybe I'm not really sure, but I thought it really looked nice. And I really like that contrast of this just little tiny bit of dark orange in this facade. You can also see I went straight back to modified plates again and brought out some of these modified one by ones with the circles on the side and then added some more texture by using the grill brick. Um, and then capping it off with yet more of the scroll work pieces in tan. So it's a very tan build, but um, I think we'll see that get balanced out in a minute with the colours. But I think it's looking nice. We've got just a little bit of those accent colours, those dark tans and uh, dark orange. And you can see here we go with the flowers, which are just going to add this nice spice of colour. We're using stuff like teal, aqua, or mint, as I like to call it, lavender, coral, uh, light blue and yellow, just some variation on patterns of flowers as well. And now I can see that I've just realized that the height is just slightly off, but we're going to ignore that for now. Um, here I am adding the hollow light. So I said it was hollow, although it looks like there should be apartments there from the outside. And we're just kind of playing around with a bit of a lamp technique for the inside here. You can see I've got my bar hooks on, I've got my dish outside, and I'm adding some trans orange studs with holes in the middle to attach. Now originally I wanted those to be yellow like most lights but um well I couldn't because they don't have the hole in it but I think orange works nicer because it shows as more of an old building that's got really bad lighting because you know when lights get old they go more orangey. Here we are finally doing the second part of the facade for the palace cinema and different to the first floor which stands alone from the ground floor this one's actually going to be built into the second floor because it has to be because when you take the second floor of the palace cinema off to see the lobby this facade wall is going to have to come with it because, well, it has to, it doesn't have a choice. But either way, this is going to be a very replicable uh, facade, which we're going to do now. And you can see that I'm building up that same pattern from down below with the triangle uh, slopes. And we're just colouring that into the grey. And I was a bit worried that it would be too big a blob of grey, but it turned out OK. I was able to use some stud, um, some slopes on the side to... Uh, kind of match with those angled plus slopes I did on the ground floor, if you remember back to 20 minutes ago or so. Um, and here we go, we are deleting the wall because this wall is actually, like I said, built in. It's going to be not double thickness, but it's going to be extending outwards. And the same is going to be true for the roof, which you will see shortly. These windows are transparent because they're actually seeing through. So it's almost like those ground floor white windows were transparent once you could see into the lobby, but they were plastered up white to have posters on them. You know, it's all about telling this story from the inside, but they're not no see, not seeing any evidence of the mistakes on the inside, um, allowing you to just tell two separate stories and never see the uh, inconsistencies between them, just like I mentioned with the tan building. It looks like apartments on the outside, it's got flowers and everything, but as soon as we go uh, inside, it's just hollow because it's part of the bank. And it's just about telling those stories, uh, different stories from the same perspective without compromising each other, and that's really interesting and also fairly difficult to think up. I spend a lot of time doing some preamble here. Um, anyway, we're moving back and we're replicating the design from the ground floor top onto this floor top. And you can see I've got my half slopes as well as those uh, other curved slopes with the angles cut out of them, just like below. And we'll be moving on to the roof here and you can tell that I'm doing it differently because I'm using my rail plates again. <laughs> Back where we are with the rail plates and I used a double rail plate to signify that this was the roof before doing a tile layer which actually does tie in with the top of the second floor there in the right colour of tan which I believe I change back out in a minute but at the moment it looks weird because it's stuck out at the moment I'm also just playing in with the slopes and seeing what I can do sort of just checking it from different angles before I started working on this upper floor segment which we're also going to have to tie in which is also a pain to do because well um, this is not designed for this. This palace cinema was not designed to have a third, uh, third, um, floor. Um, 
angle of front and you can see it in a minute when I pause but I had to do some serious thinking about what I was doing to this pillar here to tie it into the three and it it stumps me for a couple of minutes I walk away and I, I come back with an idea but it's dome dark tan and here we go I'm thinking I'm thinking um, but we're going to use some inverted arches to uh, add some decoration to the left hand side and the main important thing was that this kind of um, Chinese prong Thing, the, the one that I'm focused on right now, it had to sort of turn the direction, so it had to be flat on the front, but sort of curving from the left and the back in order to um, kind of link it together, get that curve on the front, because doing this third curve was really difficult, because the existing palace cinema was really a fixed building, and then to add this extra third edge of interest to it was um, uh, slightly nerve-wracking, but you know, we managed it. And hopefully we'll get back to the build in just a second where we can finish off this roofing. And that was another challenge really was getting the roofing to look fairly oriental. But um, here we go. And we'll see that with these more triangle slopes. Uh, once I find a, a group of a group of accents and decorations I like for a build, um, it sort of uh, becomes a very like quick thing. Like I use them again and again. And you see I'm very not always repetitive but I, I use my half circles I use my slopes and I use my um, pointy slopes which we'll, we'll see again just here um, repetitively in in the build to keep it consistent so using some slopes in between them more of my rail plates which are becoming some of my favorites some more slopes and there's what I meant with those pointy slopes up there and on the front allowing for like a kind of feels oriental to me I mean it really isn't is it but <laughs> we're getting some dark tan in there uh, mixing in the colors from the actual Parisians roof you know not Parisian palace cinema uh, to make them look similar but overwhelming a lot of dark uh, light gray to build in the facade that we had and just quickly here before we go and take a look at the model in studio I'm working on the internal divider wall and I'd already done a bit of work on the palace cinema interior off camera which um, I'll show you properly in a second but you can sort of see I uh, modified the staircase going up a bit. I shoved over the uh, cinema screen and seats by one as well, and um, allowing enough room for this dividing wall, which I will explain when we get into studio. But there's two doors, one for the cinema viewers and one for the cinematographer with the film camera. And you see we've got some decorations on the wall, which I'll put prints to later on. But to be honest, don't think it looks too bad. So let's go over to studio. So over here in studio, the first thing I really wanted to talk about was um, this path. And we'll get to the Palace Cinema in just a second. But from the top down, you can really see what I'm going for, where we've got this cracked away sort of base that then has all the cobble that will come in here. And I'll probably do the cobble off camera or maybe I'll make it a separate piece of footage. Um, but the first thing we should take a look at is the Palace Cinema. Now, as I mentioned right at the beginning, which you probably don't remember, is I shifted this thing off its base plate. And how I did that was by taking away the sidewalk that usually runs along here and just well getting rid of it so the walk of fame is now only a one-sided event so that we could have our, our pathway on that side because this side doesn't need it because it's got the um the whole alleyway and i also to to mark, match with that i redid the color of these um little bits of sidewalk that i'd had in here and changed those to light bluish gray to match so this is as far as the normal modular pathway should go now, over here on this side where we focus most of our efforts for this episode, you can see what I mean about this blend. Now, it's hard to do because we really haven't got uh, the street continued, but you can sort of get the effect of we're going to have our normal street view down here. You can see it fits very well. And then as you turn into this alleyway, you're just going to start getting glimpses of this more Chinese and Eastern architecture, which should continue as you go round into the street. And to be honest, I really don't mind the blend. If I go and center on it, like... It doesn't look too off. I mean, yeah, it looks a bit weird, but um, let me know what you guys think down below. We've seen a lot of this facade, so I'm not going to focus on it. However, I did make a couple of alterations since last time. Uh, the most notably of of these was I added these uh, dark grey strips to break up the uh, dark tan just a bit more. Now, we already had a lot of dark uh, light bluish grey, and this was slightly concerning. However, it was really important to me that I break up the monotony of these windows, especially considering a lot of these buildings will be taller. I'm going to need method like this. The other thing was I had another sign just to keep this um, sort of pattern going with all these um, little signs. And this one's just a banner uh, held up on some skeleton arms on a uh, dark bluish grey, no, pearl dark grey um, hook there. Now you can see into the inside and let's start with that. You've already really seen this roof segment. Nothing's changed with the entrance up here. But if I go and hide this, 
and then go and centre down on the second floor. No alterations have been made on the ground floor, but uh, this is where all the magic happened. So like I mentioned, I shifted over the cinema seats as well as the cinema screen itself over so it was cramped into the wall and um, so that the seats were central with the actual cinema. I also moved uh, this plinth over by one, but that's not really important. Uh, so if you were a patron, you would come up the stairs, you would turn around the landing here, and you'd enter through this door at the front of a cinema like you normally would in, well, any other cinema. Uh, this door would probably open to the wall. I haven't changed that round yet. You've also got some what would be movie posters again along the wall, thinking of using some video tiles for that, maybe. We'll see whenever we get to that part of the project. But then once you come in the door, you can move along the front, find your seat, go back. And I think this just works much better. The Palace Cinema interior always really bugged me. Um, in that regard, there were, like, there were very little seats, and I understand the seat one, you really couldn't get an extra row of seats in there, but why was it off-centre, why was there just so much empty space, but this I can understand, and there'd be a couple more details to add, like some popcorn in that pop piece, uh, but anyway, let's talk about the actual reason I did this, so we got the separate door here for the, uh, the cinematographer, which I didn't really modify because it's an old theatre, but the whole problem I had was if I was going to add windows on this second floor, they would have to be see-through. They could not be more movie posters, especially considering they're on the second floor. And I didn't want to do just a giant billboard because I actually want this to look like a city street. But how do I have giant gaping windows into a cinema room? Well, you don't. And the other thing that bugged me about Bella Cinema was why does the stairway access interrupt the movie? If you're going up and down the stairs, you should not be disturbing the people watching a movie, even if there is no second, uh, second viewing room on the third floor. So what I did is I made this corridor, so there's enough room for you to walk around and then go up to the next floor without compromising the actual cinema, and um, I just made it a bit nicer in here. So instead of it being a part of this, it's now its own separate hallway with an entrance for employees and an entrance for patrons. You've got a nice little balustrade uh, with some pointy cone uh, like decoration, as well as the windows. You see through, you see a nice interior, but you don't disturb the cinema viewers. Um, that was a big thing for me. Sounds absolutely petty, but, um, well, there you go. And then roof access is as normal. You've just got a bit more of a fancy roof on this side. And obviously this will work a lot better when you've got this ever so slightly taller building over here. However, speaking of this taller building, let's take another little look. So the ATM is finished, and as I've mentioned before, this one is basically just based off that Spider-Man Homecoming um, ATM heist set, which had this really nice blue and white colour scheme, so I was pretty pleased with being able to do that. And you can actually see the stripy wallpaper on the inside, and this is the first finished custom interior. Like, this actually has a roof, well, almost. This is, is finished. And um, here, I haven't really finished this back wall because I, I wanted to modify it a bit yet, so there's still some, some changes over here. However, you can see what I was talking about. This is our, our curtain rail, which is something that goes along the top of rooms. And then the paint, uh, the wallpaper kind of fades and then it's just a, a tan colored paint or just the exposed brickwork above it. And I think this was a really nice way of um, blending the internal change that we're gonna have on this inside, which no one ever will see because you can't get an angle to see it through the windows. You can't get an angle from below. And if you're looking at the inside, you're gonna be taking this segment off so that you can actually see clearer. However, one problem we've got, and it's kind of hard to spot here, is on the sides. I was checking this in the time lapse, but um, the sides aren't equal <laughs> at all. Uh, that's problematic because have you ever seen a modular do a step up? But that's what we're going to do. We're going to do a modular with a step up. <laughs> um, um, and the last thing I really want to show was uh, the Chinese New Year restaurant. And I'm not really going to bother showing you the interior. You've seen the fish tank. You've seen the, the venom scene. We'll come back to this when we do all the uh, decorations and other bits like that. But I might put a vase in this corner or something like that. But I suppose we've got this awning out the front, which sort of covers the dragons, but just makes them a nicer detail. Not everything has to be so prominent. This thing is ready for its second floor, which is a job that is upcoming. And this facade hasn't really changed. However, I really do like how the three are sort of blending. I just need these upper floors to, to make it work. I think I'm going to have to tone down the white in the um, second floor up here. We might have to to do something about that because I think white is becoming a bit heavy on this build. But anyway, with lots of progress to look forward to, I better get back to the actual construction side of things. So I'm going to wrap this one up for today. Please, uh, please anyone let me know what you guys think of this building in particular, the modified third floor for the Palace Cinema. Uh, down below in the comments, consider subscribing so you don't miss the next one and goodbye.